Okay. Okay, I will temporarily serve as the organizer of this meeting just long enough to get sworn in and view the lecture officers, and then we'll get we'll and launch ourselves. Uh, Teresa, how do you want to? I guess I should call roll first. We will swear in person and we'll do the roll call. Do what? They'll be sworn in first and then they'll do the roll call. Okay. Teresa, go ahead. Do you guys want to stand? I'll read the oath and then just say like I do. I do solemnly swear that I possess all the qualifications for charter commissioner as prescribed by law, that I will support the Constitution of the United States and of the state of Missouri, the provisions of affecting cities of this class, and the ordinances of the city of Raytown, Missouri, and faithfully faith doing myself in office. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have three people nominated. Who's the third? 
I've had a lot of leadership experience in various organizations and so forth. I've had leadership training, and I've had to train leaders um, in people in companies. So uh, the task of trying to keep them in the hand and uh, how to run charter uh, are a similar uh, entity like this, uh, I think is part of my experience. I think probably everybody that's been nominated would do a good job, and probably even some others that weren't nominated. Um, I would serve on the last charter commission, and I believe that everybody that ran for this charter uh, ran for the same reason because they want to see a charter pass. I think that's why we're all here. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if any of us didn't think it would be a, a difficult job uh, because, as we know, we've already seen four charter commissions fail. Um, for me personally, um, like everybody else, I'd like to see the process go as smoothly as possible. Um, already, just in the last few minutes, um, we've seen some stumbling blocks how they can they can uh, surface, and we haven't even gone anywhere. We're just talking about the charity. So. But I think it's important that where we're at, uh, whether it be me or one of the other three, be first is able to. Um, to remain calm and be able to deal with everybody so everybody feels respected, everybody's listened to, everybody has a voice. And in the end, even though that we're not all going to agree with each other, we can all walk away because the process was done fairly, <coughs> the due process, or majority rules, and feel like, hey, we had input, but we're going to support the democracy, which is majority rule. So we have a motion to vote by secret ballot, and we have a second. I'm not okay. Well, Charge, why don't you go ahead and take a roll call vote, please. Okay. A roll call vote for that motion. So the motion on the floor is to vote by secret ballot with a plurality.
Um, you want the numbers per person? Or just the person that got it? Numbers? Ted Bowman with four, Steve Gunther with six, Mike with one, and Jim with one. So Steve Gunther would be the elected person in that position. Thank you. 
vote on what they passed. Hartwell zero, Jason Green six, Mike McDonough two, Ted Bowman four. So it would be Jason Green.
as you would have some type of filming or, or video that the minutes don't have to reflect every person's statement <coughs> throughout the <coughs> but what the cultivation of a motion and a vote and some type of discussion would be so they're not 15 pages worth of notes because that would be encompassing the board. <coughs> but I'm more than happy to do that. <coughs> Um, I have taken notes for uh, the bodies for small numbers of bodies, but um, I have, I'm a good note taker. I've taken decent uh, detailed notes. I check to make sure all the facts are correct before we move on generally, uh, just in case there is no video for some reason. Um, and uh, I believe I would be put in the position. All right. With that, we'll go ahead and. I'll take the discussion on Sergeant at Arms and why you think Susan will be that one. I had uh, just assumed that that would be standard officer's style in a What specific duties do you see that they would have? Sergeant at Arms to the Green King Soldier, you know. Hopefully, we should have a Spot that Sergeant at Arms typically is there to ensure order. So we need to be thrown out of the meeting and have to do it. <laughs> well, I, I so we definitely that. hope that that's not going to be the case, <laughs> and, and it should be a guy with a gun. What is there like? to be an interruption in the meeting, <coughs> not from within the council itself. No, I, I, I just remember in our own procedures that, that uh, Janet was stipulated that she thought that the chairman should not be the one that throws a person out. It should be the sergeant of arms. That the sergeant of so arms. So I just remember what you said. Um, so if you don't have a sergeant of arms, it would be you, Steve. And that's the question. Should the chairman write the head the mic? <laughs> you can just give the direction at the time. <laughs> <laughs> it could happen, so, well. That would be from within or outside of the commissioners in it, on, on the commission. It could be someone not sitting on the commission who uh, incites a commotion of some kind and needs to be removed. Well, you can't like them if they're not here. Well, I, I would think that, I would think more importantly that Parliamentary procedure or points of order or this small group of Robert's rules would be the job of the sergeant at arms. And, and I'm not sure that 
I think somebody mentioned that it being somebody not on the commission probably makes as much sense. I, I, I just, I don't know that, I mean, if, if it's simply about throwing somebody out of the meeting because they become disruptive, I, I don't know that that's all of it. I, mean, I thought that was easy to say. Saying that it could be from within or without, and, and maybe from without was a primary concern. And along those lines, uh, I, I don't have Robert's rules in front of us. I don't know all um, the duties of a sergeant at arms. It was just my uh, basic understanding that one was normally uh, on. One of the officers on the commission. I, I haven't been in a group that has used the search of the arms. Um, and I, I can't. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I have not been a member of a group that has used the sergeant at arms personally, so I can't speak to that because I don't have the experience. Um, however, I couldn't imagine it would be a, person, a member of the group that was elected because of um, other duties that would go along with that. But I would think it would be someone else. Uh, I'm familiar with. Committees and subcommittees that all be outside the realm of the membership, um, but I'm not here. Well, you know, stand corrected to.
I know they might be done. of that yeah. procedure of any type of financial somebody needs to be on it you know because it's not like oh you're free fall and have all this money it needs to be itemized and you need to know where you are if you are within a budget because it can't be oh let's have a party for five thousand dollars you only got ten it needs to make sure that that money whatever is allotted is allowed and, and spent through that process the whole year process to the end of the day. Would it be a um, this is a question, would it be appropriate to have a secretary and treasurer? So it's just keeping keep the record that he wanted. So I, have, I can't hear you. Would it be appropriate to have a secretary slash treasurer? So she's keeping record that he wanted. That, that was I think that's good. I, I don't think I was going to say, I typically know it's kept as a separate thing. Um, yeah. One chance and wait to speak. Well, the reason I think we need one is because we will incur expenses. Someone has to keep record of what those expenses are and present them to the city so that they can get them. And support the documents. Yes, absolutely. I hear one other question. <coughs> so Sandy's not here to accept or decline. Perhaps we could hold this off for the next week. That's what I was thinking to myself of that. I mean, because the other nominees reply on the content. So we'll hold off on that. Steve, I would suggest um, that the public and the last charter commission, even though we had a treasurer, I never remember a running state of money being spent. Otherwise, every time we met, they, we, they announced how much money we'd spend from week to week. So I would just suggest that if we're going to have a treasurer, that, that we be given that running amount every time we meet. Exactly. Very good. Uh, well, before you speak, Lisa, let me just say a couple things. Um, 
as I've been just watching y'all speak and part of my southern slang a little bit, but uh, I, I just want to acknowledge one thing really quick. Uh, at times, people began to talk initially together, but you quit, and I greatly appreciate that. You started respecting each other uh, for one person saying and, and going in order. So I, I think if we can continue that, you know, if we honor each other and respect each other and give everybody a chance to speak independently without other conversations going on, I think that will really help this charter. So I greatly appreciate you all holding back your other comments and letting somebody see. Is there somebody else over here that wanted to see? Okay. Well, I guess the next um, order of business on the agenda is the business of the charter itself. Um, Everybody does know why we're here. And is everybody familiar with what a charter actually does for a community? I mean, yes. Is there anyone yeah. this? Um, I, I just an email out recommending that we invite the NML to come in and make a presentation on what the responsibilities are uh, and, and, so have, and, and how to conduct this. Um, so we're just really it's up to the board as a whole. Commission the whole decided they want to do that. Um, I, I did get that approved to the city if you want to do it. So uh, I talked to the NML and they said they would be glad to do it also. So was there a cost associated with that? Um, it's going to run probably about $100 to do that. I didn't get that impression when I talked to them. I didn't ask about money. Um, how's everybody feel about that? I'm sorry. I think without, regardless of what the cost is, I think that we cannot uh, go forward with this charter without having them come and speak to us. I feel it's very important. Can you um, elaborate on that? Well, they're going to tell us just exactly what we can and can't do. They're, go they're going to um, they're not going to tell us what we can and can't put in a charter. They're going to tell us legally what we can and cannot do. And I think it's important that we're all on the same page on that, that we all know. That's just my opinion. Constitution of the state of Missouri, you're in pretty good shape as far as the Charter Commission goes. If, if you feel it's necessary to do this, I guess go ahead. I don't think they charged us last time, but that was a long time ago. Um, I, I don't, I didn't really see a whole, personally, I did not see a whole lot of benefit from it, to be honest with you. Because they're, they're not going to be able to come, if you're expecting them to come in and say, you will not do this, or you will have to do this, that's not going to happen. It's going to be very, like I said, it'll be different shades of gray and you'll, in, in the instructions that you get. Um, for those of you on the Charter Commission the last time, um, would you say that the information could be downloaded online from the NML website just as easily as, say, coming out to talk to us? Or, or would it be for us to find information from other sources more so than having them talk? I know. I, 
know that the original has got a lot of stuff that they put out there as far as you know governing and stuff like that. Mesh, you're in the audience. You're familiar, probably. Aren't you a member? Aren't you? Don't you attend their meetings and so forth? Okay. Yeah. Uh, first of all, for those that don't know who the MML is, yes, we do pay dues to it. They are the lobbying organizations for all cities in the state of Missouri. They're a service organization. And, um, and, and basically, in city government, we all work together. For example, we're not really independent, because if you were, then you wouldn't be spending city money. Um, so it, it's, it's a united group. And I would like to think that everybody, whether they be a city employee or city in Austin, uh, or uh, on the Charter Commission, that, that uh, we all feel like part of the same team. And uh, I know that one thing nice about the MML is that because they're part of the city, anybody has the ability to pick up the phone and call if you have a question. Uh, anytime in the course of our proceedings, as things, uh, uh, we don't always have to take each other's word. Uh, never do you know if I'm right. I don't never know if you're right. If you have a question, you call them and mail and say, well, let's listen to what they said. This is really true. They are a service organization. And uh, the one thing about having them come here is that if anybody has a question, um, they have the ability to answer that. It's not very easy to do that online. Um, so that's just one of the things. So whether you do that or not, again, I'm not pushing for it. I, uh, I think it would be a good start because it gives you a chance between now and when they come to think of questions and what, what our premises are. And, and I, we've already said it once. We all want to see this charter pass. So anything we can do to get started on the right foot, you know, that would be important. So, but if you want $100, I think it would be. I make a motion that we do uh, spend up to $100 and come speak. Second would be going to Would you like to continue to, your dialogue with them this evening? Um, yes, I would. I, I am going to have a connection. Uh, I, I gave it, yes, I'll take care of it. Okay. And then I'll call you and, and make sure that you approve what we're doing. Okay. For information, Mr. Trump, uh, is there any way we can set a time limit when those folks are speaking to us not to right. take up the entire meeting? It'll be about an hour. An hour. hour. And maximum questions and everything. Yes. Exactly what the small groups, whatever you call them, was. Yeah, small group procedures that is 
there's no set fast limit on the number in the body, but uh, a group of our size is generally considered different from a group, say a mass assembly. Um, so the rules are a little bit more laid back in a small group. That way um, you can speak as, as many times to a motion or against a motion as you'd like versus you can only do so a couple of times. In a large group, that's just a few, you know, things from just going on forever and uh, they keep more order. Um, also, in a small group versus a large group, the uh, chair would be able to speak as he's been doing now and he would be able to vote. So the chairman has a vote. Quorum required? Um, quorum would be quorum. I believe it would be if it's 13, it would be 7. Including the chair? I could be. Well, I will. Well, no, I, I think it's. I just want to clarify because I've I, I, I I never heard the term. I'm pretty sure that's how it is. Well, we have 13 member bodies, so we do seven with the quorum, and the chairman has a vote. It takes the same vote break in the past. So that just, I just wanted to put that out there instead of a large group. We strike words like consensus from our vocabulary and stuff like that. Okay. Bye. So is it a separate book that they're all in the same book? No, it's just the big Robert's room. This is just the abridged version. It's not a smaller version. No, this no. is no, this is just an abridged copy. Oh, okay. Of it's in the same book. Okay. It, it has the same thing, it's just it doesn't include all the right. things. Alright. One that I'm going to apply. I'm not ready to know this. Any other discussion regarding that? This thing is a You can just take yourself. We'll take a little more. Jim Asia? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Steve Duncan? Yes.
Well, first of all, I'm not going to go into an argument about what's a bad <laughs> charter and what's a good <laughs> charter, but Jim, you said a mouthful there. I think it's in fairness to all the members of the commission you need to point out in a written form of time what the bad parts of that charter were. It was a political campaign that defeated it. That's what defeated it. It was not the charter. That's, that's a different argument. My concern, though, more so are the comments that you made statement. Um, you're not going to try to preclude any ideas that come from any members on this commission. No, absolutely not. Okay, because my when you say you're trying to take me to task, and it sounds like you're trying to fast track it, and because I have some ideas, and I also ran for the Charter Commission, and you didn't see me write down that we need to send the Charter once. Um, and there's other people sitting up here at this table who feel the same way. And I, I think it's wrong to go in with a preconceived idea that we're just going to go in and just kind of like rubber stamp what we have and say we passed the charter and have a party. You know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't really make any reasonable forward movement changes that can help the city. And I think we need to address those things. I think that anybody up here. And I think those will all be addressed, Greg, as we go through the process. I mean, my idea was to put things forward in a simpler manner to where then we could have group discussions on each one of the items and then come to a consensus as to what happens. And if we bring something that's not in the current code of ordinances, take it on our city? I have no issues with doing that. I mean, the, the fact is we, we really need to look at <coughs> all things, how much we change things, is a decision of body. No so, doubt. Uh, so uh, I just I just asking if we can take the current code of ordinances and use that as our blueprint for our charter. I didn't hear him say that. That's what I took. I didn't hear him say that. Did you hear him say that? I, say that? I, mean, I did I heard him say it was a starting point. It was a starting point. My concern with regard to that particular issue is this that Ask that for a long meeting, uh, a motion was set forth to recodify the city ordinances. And if that's underway, what what are we going to be working on? Good question. I uh let me interject for a second. I I, I think Jim Stranger's um Suggestion of familiar, not familiarizing myself with previous charter attempts and other city charters, I think is a good one. I think, you know, hopefully that many of us have had a chance to do such already. I think there's nothing wrong with you know, doing that and maybe forming your own opinions on why the last one did not pass. Because, again, I've heard everyone up here say that the idea is to get one written that you feel confident in and one that's going to pass. <coughs> And those are the two prong goal, goal there. <coughs> I have no doubt that that's, in my mind, the way to go to familiarize yourself, educate yourself by reading not only just previous rate town charter attempts, but you know, neighboring cities and things such as that. So I, I think that's a, a noteworthy suggestion. And coming along that line, too, is that since we've agreed to bring the MML in, I don't really see a big area of concern regarding that because. Are they going to be coaching us for the end anyway? No. I don't think no, it's coaching. No. Well, I, I, maybe that was a poor choice of words. Forgive me. Uh, giving us some overview into the process. I think yes, to advice. Yeah, they're doing that, but I think also individually. Sure. That seems to be advice as well. Well, I know I stayed up last night until about 2 in the morning reading quite a few charters from around here. And I was uh, amazed at the differences, and but also the similarities. And so, uh, I would heavily suggest that uh, you know we spend the time uh, looking at that information and trying to find out what really works for our community. And the only way we can do that is by educating ourselves. So, um, there's some uh, I know. I read Blue Springs, I read Independence, I read uh, uh, Belton's, uh, Glasgow and Grandview actually are under the Kansas City, so they're being so they're in the Kansas City. So, I mean, it, uh, it's uh, one of those things that the more information that we can pull together, I think the better we'll be able to make those decisions.
decisions. And uh, I think by the time we meet the next uh, charter commission, uh, <coughs> and, uh, uh, it would be nice if people would have the chance to have done those reviews and come in with ideas and suggestions uh, as to how we structure the charter. Uh, and this would be obviously after we listen to the group uh, on But uh, uh, we need ideas on how we're going to structure the charter, what's important that goes into it, and then, then look at what we currently have and see how that might fit within that structure, what things might need to be changed or altered, take those suggestions to start out there on the table, and then incorporate those ideas into the final charter. I don't see this taking a long process. I'm not trying to fast forward anything in, but I would like to see this completed before the end of the summer. Quite obviously. I'd like just to share an experience. Uh, that was a good learning experience for me, and I think it's quite on the point. And it kind of summarized what I tried to say a moment ago. Um, a few years back, actually several years back, uh, Cheryl and I talked about procedures, and uh, it was something we felt that we needed because most cities adopt a set of procedures, and we didn't have a set of procedures. So um, I went to MML, and I got copies of many cities' procedures. I even went to some cities and just read them all, condensed them from 28 down to 16, down to about 8. And I came up with what I thought was a mix of everything it was perfect, you know, and everything was combined. And when uh, the mayor asked me to bring it to the city, um, I called all the aldermen. I thought it was all going to work out very well because they, everybody had input. But in the end, when they were presented to the board, um, I think there were like a couple votes for them. And what I learned from that is, uh, first of all, starting with what, what, what I thought were model cities and, and getting input even from the aldermen, um, turned out to be a blanket. No, we don't want procedures at all. And what I learned from that is, is the fact is that even when we take as many charters as you want to get and try to condense them and come up with quote, a good charter, in the end it's going to be what the people break down. Right. They're going to be in the same position that the board was when I presented those procedures. That's what we really have to remember. We're writing it for the people. That's why when we say keep it simple, you know, everybody knows the newspaper's read is written about a sixth grade level. That's what they want to see. Something easy to the understand and not a major change. So, yeah, we, we need models, we, we need to learn, and we're going to discuss. And in the end, it's going to be a simple majority rule. We're all going to vote on it, but we think should be in this charter. But the bottom line is that we have to be smart and have the insight to judge what the people of the city want, not what we want. Okay, I heard you say we have to judge what they want, but. I think more than that, we need to have our ears to listen. That's what you have to figure out yourself. Yeah. And going back to that, uh, and I'm sorry, I'm going to turn the question, the uh, issue around just a little bit to go back to something I mentioned earlier. Once again, if we're to be working with existing ordinances and the city is recodifying the ordinances, I think we need to have that nailed down what we're working from, precisely what we're working from. Because if that process is already <coughs> being done, I think it's important to know you can't work with a set of ordinances that's in a pattern that right? should be not being recognized. So I think it's sure. to know that. I'm not sure I understand <coughs> why the code of ordinances in the charter by the city ordinances. Yeah, I mean, the charter. The charter decides structure. whether or not there are going to be any and how they're enacted and whatnot. It doesn't, it doesn't actually have them in it. They don't care enough on what we do. Um, it might be beneficial, though, to, if that is indeed the case, and I don't claim to know it all, um, round up some documentation for mixture work that includes department names and each department's responsibilities, their operating budgets, salaries for individuals in most departments within the city, 
I think also that consensus, you know, if down the road we need to speak to a lawyer about legalities or something, the consensus of the group is, here's what our questions are. And we've agreed on these, that those are the ones that we want answered, and then those go to the lawyer or the person, whatever. Not, this person wants to call that person. It's really back to that point of contact, so you understand we decided, yeah, these are the questions we really want answered. And those can go, they can get answered, and then they're brought back, and we have those answers. It just, I really don't want to, you know, my, and this is just me, but I just would really like to see that point of contact. So informational gathering is not given back to one person, but it's given back to all in a really, in a process. Uh, and from my, from, uh, from my experience is it, it usually works best uh, if, as we make decisions, uh, smaller groups get formed to gather that information <coughs> for these things so that there might be several people that are gathering information and we can make a presentation to the group and then if there's any additional information that the group feels like they need from that particular area, then we can ask for those questions or ask those questions to try to gather that information go one time. It's, uh, we need to be able to Again, I mean, my idea of simplicity is that we don't keep redoing things, that we do things one time and we go to the city one time with a list of things that we need and that can only be done through people with the experience that have dealt with the city and, and are actually in that position. So um, I really look forward to having uh, smaller groups to help research these different things that we can bring things to this and different groups. Concluded should be done with approvals of more than a whole. Exactly. I mean, what should be done? <coughs> uh, well, I mean, the subcommittees and the fact gathering and stuff like that. As we work together to try to gather what we need for information, like from the city or from, uh, you know, the other organizational structures, or, you know, one group might be tasked for certain other information. So, I guess if you look at that, uh, basically as task force to get things done. Stay on point and, I mean, go from here. One, one thing I do have a, a big concern about is when we, we do uh, choose a lawyer, and I think only two people, and two people because they would both listen to the same thing and come up with, you know, a consensus. <coughs> Those two people would take all questions to him. No one else, the lawyer would not be paid if he took or she took anybody else's questions. That only two people should go there, give them the questions, bring them back. And that is again approved by the board. And I got another issue to talk on what Janet said. We want to be expeditious so we can get this properly on November ballot. Like it changed any Thanksgiving piece wrapped up by the end of August. We are not attorneys. We were brought together by choice of the people to form the city in the best way we know how. Uh, we're not looking to turn out uh, on our own a document that would necessarily stand up in the court of law, but that is the eventual outcome that is desired. In order to save money on attorney's fees, it seems that it might work well to put together the best possible document that we can possibly put together. Tender that to an attorney at the end of our best possible work for him to red, red line, in other words, make recommendations from that to us that we could then work off those recommendations, clean it up, and send it back maybe once, maybe twice more, might be always needed. It would be uh, fiscally responsible because there, there wouldn't be a lot of back and forth necessary. It would be expeditious because we wouldn't try to be be trying to dot every I and cross every T on our own as we 
progress through the work. That is a suggestion that I want to get out there for consideration. I think we're kind of missing a point here, and that point being, we have a year to do this chart. I don't know what we're talking about by the end of August, by November, whatever. We have a year. Our main concern is we want to put a good charter together that is going to please the people of Raytown, that will see Raytown move forward. <coughs> now, if you can't spare a year to do this, then you should have signed up. Okay, I'm just going to be real blunt about it. I'm sorry if I made some of you mad. I hope I didn't. But it's just a simple fact. And, you know, we're adults. We got time. So let's put it to good use and let's write a good chart. Well, I, I don't think that uh, that's not uh, the consensus of the group. Okay, everybody wants to write a good chart. I understand that. But, and, you know, putting a time time limit on it, I, I think we're, we're kind of burying ourselves. And I think we'll find out as we proceed how well we're doing. And I mean, I've had to deal with a lot of cities in the, with the nature of my business and cities and attorneys tend to work on their own time frames, it seems like. So uh, how fast we can get turnarounds from attorneys with reviews and so forth like that are going to greatly affect our schedule. There's no question sure. about that. And how will we end up uh, even organizing the charter and, and, and going forward with the putting everything together, that's going to take time. But, I mean, it's like writing a good essay. you gotta, you got to do the outline. you got to figure out what you got to have in there. And then from there we can better understand where our time frame is going to be spent. So I, I agree. Great. Yeah, well, I, I would agree with Mary Jane said that I think it's a mistake to set artificial time frames if you're going to use it. And, but beyond that, uh, there's been a lot of talk about city attorney. How are we going to choose one? That would be a great discussion. I, I mean, and I, I see a committee or task force being formed just for that one issue. You know, to, to look at different uh, attorneys that uh, have worked with the city before maybe, uh, or even looked at other attorneys, and then come forth to the group and uh, give us their thoughts and ideas. And so, uh, one of the things I would hope to get accomplished in the next week or so is uh, a list of ideas that I have as far as different committees and different things, but and I hope that everybody else, by the time we have our next meeting, has ideas that we can uh, go forward <coughs> to get this organization, I mean, this structure set. So you're yeah. leaning towards final forming a, a select committee to look at that? What's your question? Who So you know the committee is formed to set exempt other commissioners from bringing suggestions to you? Well, absolutely not. I mean, this is a group. <laughs> and we're all here to contribute. And if anybody has a suggestion of an attorney that you know they are familiar with, they know could be uh, a good asset to the board, that would be great for the commission. And that's and like I said, you know, when people bring and present ideas and everything, that's when the rest of the group has an opportunity to talk to that group and speak what they think would be good ideas. Uh, I think we need to go ahead and move on to the at 8 o'clock. Uh, we need to go ahead and try to schedule the next meeting. Uh, I've kind of already talked about what we need to do between now and then. Uh, need to gather as much information as we can. And uh, uh, just on learning and familiarizing each other uh, and ourselves with just the structure of a charter and how that looks, and then if we can get the uh, group to come in and do the presentation at the beginning of that, then I think we can move on afterwards and actually sit down. Um, I'm, I know this arrangement works for an audience, but it doesn't work too well for me because I like it nice and tight so I can just go forward with things. But, uh, yeah. Um, 
in your email you indicate that you're going to be out of town for a mission trip? Yes, I mean tomorrow morning. But right. I would just suggest that we not be seeing it back. Well, I've got plenty of things that I've got to do now. Yeah. Right. And uh, if we did, if we were able to get copies of charters to Jan, she would uh, <coughs> make sure everybody got those. Would give us some of the study up front. A lot of it you can just do online. I mean, it, all you got to do is go I mean, you can, we can send out a list of email, uh, an email with various cities and their charters and, you know, we can look at the structure that's pretty quick. But, uh, yeah, I, I would, I mean, as much information, uh, I know it also got passed around a little bit that Mondays tend to work well for people. I mean, is there a good day physically? I mean, Mondays work well for me. Uh, we would first have to decide what we're at our next meeting and, and then at that meeting I would encourage everybody to make recommendations as to uh, where we might be but I mean, I'm going to throw this out again it's going to be unpopular but oh well uh, the last charter meeting they jumped around they weren't here there and yonder down the meetings I thought that was bad uh, I think we need to set a place and have every meeting there. I see nothing wrong with City Hall. I see nothing wrong where we're at tonight. There's plenty of room here for people to come here. There could be more chairs set up. Um, if we could, if this is available, I think this is where we need to come. I know that it is available every other Tuesday night, the second and fourth or fifth Tuesdays. I know those are available here. Well, do we have a consensus? I mean, I mean, is anybody really opposed to having it here? Is there? I mean, a specific. Well, I got one thing that suggested. Yes, right. I mean, we do have a, you know, a suggestion that we do have it here. So, you know, a little bit of discussion about that. I mean, I know I checked out the library, and that's expensive. There are many places that aren't expensive as well. Yeah. That we need to do this shopper. I, I, well, I, um, go ahead, sir. Oh, um, I agree on consistency because I think if you're going to meet somewhere, it's you know, you want the public to be here. You want them to you know understand where you are, what you're going to do. So consistency of place, but also consistency of day and time. You know, if it's the Absolutely. fourth Monday of every month, we all know it's the fourth Monday of every month for the next year. Put it on your calendar. Let's plan around it. Because that gives the consistency. You know where it's at. You know what it's at. You know you're supposed to be there. Well, speaking of consistency, how many times are we going to meet? That's I have a suggestion. Uh, if I think the one in here is familiar with Al Brown, the reprogram. They've got a nice little building, a uh, nice meeting area. Uh, I have talked with Al, but uh, that's a nice meeting area. And you could probably make a little donation. Look at the city. The, uh, the one
I'd like to be televised here, but would it be possible for you to use the city equipment? Are you going to be doing this every meeting? Try to, but <clears throat> it depends on whether I have conflicts. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't televise it. I put it on the internet. I put it on YouTube. I embed it in my website. And I use Creative Commons as long as you give attribution, other people can, <coughs> can, can embed it. Well, in that case, would it be possible for you to use city equipment to do that? And uh, you could, yeah. It's of lower quality than mine. It's what? It's not as high a resolution as mine, and I'm not familiar I with know, the, how to operate the, it. The reason of the motion is to try to get this out to as many people as possible. You know you did it. Okay, so it's fine. Before we vote on it, I would like to know if there's going to be uh, an expense to the city to start that. Yeah. So I'd like to know what I'm voting on. There will be an expense. Yes. Okay. Well, we should ask the city what it would cost to pay someone to do that. Okay. Well, and, and if Michael has a tape, it can go on the city website it, through the YouTube and the stuff like that. So that is available to people. Um, there, and there's other venue, media venues that the the minutes, the treasurer's report can go out in in publications. I mean, there's a variety of ways that people can know about this. And I understand about that, but even if you have the computer or the video equipment there, then it's set up and stuff. If you run past four hours, you have to go to the main room and switch the tapes. So even if you're okay to set it up and stuff, you would have to have somebody staff qualified to be able to get in there, switch the tapes, and do that kind of stuff. So there is a cost involved with using the, the city equipment, and that's something that I was concerned about. I am all for you can, you know, with the Three cameras are set up there by three different people, and they all go out to YouTube and whatever things. That's <coughs> fine, you know, because there's availability to everybody for that. Well, I'm a little confused because it's been maybe a year ago when Greg brought up himself that a lot of people in Raytown don't get the government channel on channel sets. Okay, so why are we so, so what I, Do you want to punish those who do not? No, no, no. I just have a question. Oh, well, that's bad logic. <laughs> so bad why are we logic. in such a hurry to get it out there when you say that there's not this many people that can get it on Channel 7? There's still are. Why do we put it on YouTube? I have no problem there's with no that. There's no problem putting it on YouTube. I have no problem with that at all. Okay. But there are a lot of people in this world who do not have computers, and there are some people, even if they have them, do not know how to operate them. And I can name people, but I'm not going to because I don't want to embarrass them, and I could show you specific situations. No, I mean, in particular, senior citizens, that when they get near a computer, they're just like a deer in the headlights. <coughs> so, they know I work color. Right. 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 we are a body that is really not city, uh, we would be like any other uh, organization that wanted to come in and film it. They would charge for setting it up for somebody here to, to run it uh, at two hour minimum. If the equipment breaks, we as a commission would be responsible for replacing that and that's $7,000. I have also looked into uh, I'm sorry. Was I out of turn? No, no, I was trying to get you your turn. So I, I have I have uh, been pursuing bids from videographers uh, within the area. I have two awaiting uh, further information from me with regard to a meeting schedule and approximate times durations of the meetings. These are experienced people. Uh, I will get back to them and let you know what they have to say. I, I'm thinking, uh, I don't know, ask you all a meeting uh, duration of what? Three hours max? Four hours? Not four hours. Okay. You guys gonna say, let's open up. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is four hours about the max it's going to go usually. Uh, so I think 
if everybody's set up the task, we should be able to do what we need to do in several hours. Two points. Um, one, we need to decide that eventually if it's going to open up One, I don't broadcast, but that doesn't mean I can't burn a Blu-ray or a DVD and give it to the city to, tr to broadcast. There's a solution to that. Two, I can record eight hours. I made changes in the equipment because of the Walmart debacle where I brought enough to record about five hours and enough batteries and was ended up recording audio and on my phone and anything else I could. So I also have, uh, if I can plug into a wall, a battery replacement module. So essentially I can do eight hours straight of video, burn a DVD or a Blu-ray disc and then give it to you or the city. Uh, that's, you know, whether you want to do that or, or not, is your area. My area here is just giving you the possibilities so you know certain limitations are not what you thought they were. Thank you. Decision on the second and fourth Monday's at City Hall at 6 30. 
is already working during the time when, we, when, the, when this stuff is being rebroadcast. It's done on a regular schedule. Nobody asked the man if he was going to provide it for free. Right. Actually, I tried to get some answers and they will not respond. <laughs> no, we're not just referring to it. Mr. Downey, Mr. Downey still is <coughs> offered to do this. Michael, they want to know what cost you want. There's two ways. One, is I will give you what I normally will do, but if you want to force me to be here twice a month, which precludes me doing other things, I'm not quite as happy with that as I'm perfectly willing to give you a copy of anything I shoot. I think that's reasonable. Um, you know. You would have to do incentives to ensure that I was going to block out, you know, 10 hours of my time a month or 15 hours of my time a month for this. That's reasonable. I mean, if they want to, if people want to go into negotiate the pay, I have no problem with that. I'm, if he's he made an offer to make it available in the case of the five to us so we can have a meeting to resolve this. That's all my motion is. If you want to go further than that, you can hire him. Yeah, I just the way I took the motion was it was just a request to the city and allowing Mike to give it to us. We weren't hiring anybody. That's what I took. So. Well, I'd like to speak with regard to what Mr. Gannon had to say about this, the cost of this doing this is regular practice.
But if he wants to give us a proposal to do it, I think we can entertain that. I guess I want to ask a question. Susan, are you indicating that you are going to make a motion eventually that we hire a professional to come in and photograph these meetings? Is that, is that where you're going with this? Or are you going to pay for it yourself? I never did allude to that. No, I just want to know where we're going with well, this. Well, because it, it seemed that it was of interest to the public to be able to view the proceedings, even though they may not be able to attend the meetings, that the meetings. I just want to know whether you're going to hire them or you're going to volunteer. It sounds to me like. She is asking them to give us a proposal so it'll be a position to hire. If, if the commission I know, to hire, I if the commission as a group voted to hire, then I have looked forward to obtaining some figures <coughs> that the commission may want to consider at that time. My, my response to that is that and voting in favor of Greg's motion would be, this would be the end of it, but they wouldn't come back and vote to hire somebody later. My motion only is for right. right. Yes, that's all right. right. Charlotte, My concern is the money. Where is the money coming from? My motion does not have any money attached yeah, to this. And I, I really think we have to keep on point right. and try to get that resolved and then we can pull the next decision. Well then, then I want to be clear. No. As long as he's here doing it anyway, this was a suggestion. Yes, sir. So if he doesn't show up for a meeting, there's not a video. Right. We're not committing any money. Right. Okay. All right. That's what I want to make sure because it extended on and beyond that. Would you give a friendly amendment to your motion that we have him here of his own volition when he shows up and to film and whatever he may or may not produce gets sued? If it's acceptable to him. He agrees, I agree. Let's move. That, that way we're not involved with anybody. All right, that's it. Okay. okay. Let's call. I'll have to read the motion. Just one second, please. Okay. 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 Okay.